from your experience, what's the best way to get these partnerships going and tackle some of these challenges that uh, that Wolfgang mentioned? So yeah, absolutely. Uh, ITB is certainly a way that that um, both companies and post secondary institutions can uh, get find their way into find help and and uh, assistance getting more into the innovation space. Um, under the ITB policy, a contractor who's bidding on on a a defense procurement project has to submit a value proposition. Um, and the key thing to remember about value propositions, they're tailored. Uh, there's a specific value proposition aligned with each defense procurement project. Uh, and that's developed through a whole process of analysis by industry, um, industry science and economic development uh, with input from ex outside experts and industry uh, to find the best match between uh, what we can ask of bidders and what they could deliver in terms of, of a, an economic value proposition to Canada. And one of the things that the VP does is trying to incent investment into innovation. Um, so there's, so my response is, is, is going to be in two parts. There's, first of all, there's things you don't want to do uh, in terms of trying to attract ITB investment into your project. Um, and then the second is to look more at what you can do to positively position yourself. Um, the first thing is uh, to realize that a bidder putting together a value proposition is looking at a hugely complex interaction of factors. This is what Canada wants, this is what their company is doing, what their company is doing, wants to go, how much money they have to spend, uh, what the value proposition tells them are the places they should be investing. So. Uh, for you to be able to predict as a company or as a post-secondary institution what the value proposition they may be seeking uh, looks like is going to be very, very difficult. For one thing, you may not have access to the value proposition documents themselves, but you don't know all those variables. You just can't know all those variables in the background. So, and then the other thing is be aware when you start thinking about, well, we've got a project going, we could use ITB money here. The timeframes are all wonky in terms of ITB. Uh, it's a really long cycle from uh, the entry into the defense procurement process through bid development, through evaluation, through contract award. If you're looking for money you can use next year, you're looking in the wrong place. Uh, you've got to be thinking longer term here. So then what can you do? What, what makes sense to do if, if you're looking for, for ITB opportunities? Um, first of all, create your own solid project a project that makes sense on its own terms, something you wanna do, it's something you wanna pursue, something you wanna develop, and you have a longer term vision for it. It's not a flash in the pan, we're gonna do this year and then move on. Um, once you have got your project solid, you know who you're working with, you know what your objectives are, uh, you found out your immediate source of funding, government funding, uh, in the industry investment, if it's partners, outside of the ITB space. And if you're a company, obviously it's investors. Once you've got your business plan sorted out, you know where you wanna go, then maybe you can think about, okay, so we've got this plan. What do we wanna do in the longer term where a bit more money that we're not counting on, but be really good to have could really help us out. Do you wanna extend the project as a new avenue you would wanna pursue? Things you might be able to do if you have that incremental funding above and beyond your existing resources. So then you can look at, okay, so we know that because we're going to talk to our local RDA who knows which projects are in play and who's bidding on them and has an idea what they're interested in, or a consultant if that's the way you want to go. But you're going to talk to some people who know about who's working on stuff and say, okay, what are these guys interested in? So is there something there that we could put into our long-term business plan and think about as, as, a, as, a, as a destination for ITB investment? And that could be, remember, could be money. It could be intellectual property, a knowledge transfer. It could be transfers of equipment. Uh, bidders can get credit for, for those kinds of investments. So where could that fit in? Then is there anything that we could do to structure our projects without distorting it or changing it to make our project more interesting? So you can go to, this is where you hear about the multipliers, right? You go to the ITB website and you have a look and you say, okay, so I could get, if it's a straight, research project as a PSI, post-secondary institution, I get a five, I could, the bidder could get a five times credit multiplier. Remember, it's not the money they provide to you, it's the credit they get for it, could be multiplied by five times. So that's interesting. 
Um, if I formed a consortium, so a post-secondary, and if I'm a company, if I could find my way to work with a, a um, post-secondary institution on our project, form a consortium to develop a product or service, that could be worth multipliers as well. So you start to factor in those things into your calculations. So you have a solid project, project of your own. You have a project where you thought about how this might be interesting to a, uh, uh, an ITB, somebody with ITB obligations to fill. So then the next thing is to let people know about what you've got and what you're offering. Um, so take what you've got, the information you've got, and put together your own value proposition. What makes your project different from the competitions? Because if you're talking about an AI project, there are lots of people doing AI research or AI product development. What is What makes you different? What makes you special? Uh, what do you have to offer? Think about what it is that you, if you get into a conversation with a, an ITB, uh, a company that has ITB obligations, what is it you would want from them? Is there a bit of IP that you know they might have that could really further your research in a particular direction? Um, is there some kind of equipment that they could provide? Or is it straight cash? Like if you provided this much cash, we could do this. Uh, and be aware you're entering into negotiation. They have their interests, you have your interests, and you're gonna have to talk your way through that. Um, as I said earlier, let your, let your RDA, your, the RDA for your region know about your project, uh, what you're interested in, who you might wanna work with, because they, we as a, an RDA community, we're in regular contact with the bidders on defense procurement projects. And our job is really marketing. We have companies you could do business with. We have projects you could invest in. We have things you could do for ITB credit in our region. So we push that out to you. And then be aware of, of opportunities to meet with bidders and bring your value proposition to them. Uh, you know, there's, there's the trade shows, DEFSEC was a couple of weeks ago, there's CANSEC coming up. They all have an ITB, B2B component to them. And then of course, of course, includes our own West Innovation Forum, which is coming up next March in Calgary, where the RDAs work very hard to put you together with people who are looking for investment opportunities. But when you sit down for that meeting, you want to know who you are and what you're offering above and beyond just your basic project. What is the incremental addition that, that an ITB obligation fulfillment could, could make to your project and the benefit to the, uh, to the company with that obligation they're trying to fulfill. So it's, it's take what you've got and market it, but be aware that your project has to be yours to start with and end with. 